Speaker, Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, he has seven and a half minutes. Right, thanks very much. Um, last week I was at two particular meetings in the Doyle and it was in relation to human rights abuses. And one was with a group from Pakistan and bonded labour, which is a form of slavery. And the other was in relation to the collapse of the Rana Plaza and looking at the rights of, or the lack of rights of the garment workers there. And I think both events and the groups I met showed the complete and utter disregard for human rights that we see in those particular places. And what we're talking about today um, is also an abuse of human rights and in particular when we look at the trafficking issue, the trafficking of young girls and women and also the increasing numbers of young boys who are being trafficked. Now I did read the various reports and submissions relating to the rights of the sex workers and those who have a different view um, and it makes for interesting reading. And their points are that consenting adults have the right to sell or purchase sexual services from other consenting adults. And that all adult sex workers have the right to determine whether to remain involved or to leave sex work. They believe that reducing the harm to sex workers and their clients rather than abolishing or prohibiting sex work is the way to go. And of course they are in agreement with the legislation in regard to trafficking. So basically what I think is central to their thinking is they want to distinguish between the sex bought or sold between two consenting adults. Now that's a different matter from the prostitution that arises from trafficking where people are forced into selling their bodies for sex and their call is for the state to regulate and to license and control the sex industry which they say would reduce the role of the criminal gangs and you know we have heard women in prostitution saying that they are content to work in this adult business area because they feel that they are in control so they're keen on the harm reduction model to protect them from violence and disease and that there will be support for those who do want to leave prostitution. So they see the proposed legislation and criminalising the buyer that it will have a negative effect on the men and women involved and increase the risks of violence and that um, valuable uh, police resources that are under-resourced will be prevented from fighting the trafficking which they see as the bigger issue. And of course they don't see the Swedish model as um, being as progressive as some people like to think that it is. So those arguments come from Sex Workers Alliance, Turn Off the Blue Light and Feminist IRA and they're entitled to their opinion and that's one side of the argument. Um, there was also an interesting article from a Dr. Ailish Ward who's in NUI Galway back in October 2011 and she was also, she, one of the points she made was for a very full, open and mature public debate about this challenging issue and that the policies have to be informed by the reality on the ground and to take into account all hidden or unintended consequences of any decision like the decisions that we're taking now. And again, she would have issues about criminalising uh, and how that could make women even more vulnerable to harm. Um, she makes the point that, um, you know, obviously she's concerned that this would not turn out to be riskier for women um, and that they would be less likely to turn to the police for assistance. But I've thought about all of this and of course I think far be it for me to deny any woman a right, the right of choosing what to do with their lives or the right to their own opinion. I do think that we have to draw the line. And the line that's drawn for me here is the notion that selling a body or buying a body is not an abuse of human rights. To me, it very much is an abuse. Um, I can accept the difference that they make between the consenting, but I do think that the trafficking business and buying and selling of bodies is an absolute abuse of human rights. And I find it a very sad reflection of our society today that people buy sex. And I think it's also alarming the number, the increase in the numbers of young men on a night out. And part of that night out is to get in touch through mobile phones, through the internet with the prostitute. And I can't help but wonder, is this part of the way people communicate today through social media, through the internet, through these chat rooms, etc. And that there isn't as much um, emphasis on the idea of forming relationships um, and getting to know a person. Um, and is this, you know, this idea of communicating through a machine, is this also leading to an inc a decrease in self-esteem and self-confidence of young men that they feel this is the only way to go? And of course, we're back into the system, the instant gratification. I do think the film Pretty Woman has an awful lot to answer for the impression that it gives of prostitution because the reality is different and prostitution is exploitation and it certainly doesn't do anything for gender equality. And there is another point from Sweden, is that senior police, people in the police force there, do say that because the buying of sex is a criminal offence, that there's no longer the same number of women being trafficked into Sweden. Um, 
The issue on Garda resources, legislation means comprehensive surveillance and enforcement and there is no point in legislation coming in unless there are the resources to put into the enforcement of that. And I do think that some of the trafficking issues and this issue in prostitution, they're using very sophisticated measures and I do hope that the Garda have the resources to do that. I want to acknowledge the work of Deputy Pringle in bringing this here. You know, we spend an awful lot of time in this House discussing, debating, looking for this report, looking for that report, and in the meantime, there's so much harm and so much abuse going on, um, and the trafficking industry is uh, flourishing and progressing. It's a billion dollar industry, and it's an industry that's based on ruthlessness, exploitation, and the complete debasing of women, girls, and boys who are trafficked. There are particular social and economic reasons that bring people into prostitution and we know in spite of what people like to say to the contrary that there is a link between prostitution and drug and alcohol addiction um, even though it is, there are attempts to play this down. Um, there is, that is an aspect I think the legislation may not directly address. So I just want to finish by acknowledging the work of some of the NGOs and particularly those in Dublin Central because we do have a significant um, incidents of prostitution and I'm thinking of organizations like Ruhama and also Chrysalis and the work that they do and projects that are funded through the North Inner City Drugs Task Force. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy.